Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. What is Blueprint? There are two types of people, those who enjoy programming and they do that by entering lines of code using C, using C++ or C Sharp or any other programming language. And they do that in an environment like Visual Studio. On the other hand, there are people like you and me who do not have these superpowers. Maybe we just don't enjoy looking at lines of code. We don't understand it and we don't want to do it. But let's say you want to prototype functions for your game idea or you want to bring life to your architectural project in Unreal Engine. How do you do that without entering lines of code? Blueprint enables us to script the same lines of code without the need to enter a single line of code. How? We do that in a more visual way. It's called visual scripting. There are nodes. We connect these nodes together. Each node have some functionality attached to it. And by connecting these nodes together, you get results or functions that was only available for programmers. In a way, when you are using Blueprint, you are actually scripting, believe it or not, which is amazing. This tutorial series is perfect for beginners who want to get started with Blueprint, make amazing things. Thanks again for Skillshare for sponsoring this video. With that said, don't forget to leave a like and let's get started. Hey! So there are many types of blueprint. There is level blueprint, there's class blueprint, and there are many, many others. Where can we find this stuff? Well, here on the top, the toolbar here, there are blueprints. And if you can actually take a look at new empty blueprint class, you can find all types of blueprints we have. I'm not gonna touch any of these guys. We're gonna keep this stuff super simple. On blueprint, there is something called here level blueprint. Let's click on open level blueprint. Let's start with what is level blueprint? Well, when we make anything inside a level blueprint, this level blueprint is going to be tied and related only to the level we are opening. If we do anything here, it's going to work only in this level. And if we need to move this stuff to another level, then we need to control C, control V and open the level blueprint of that map and paste stuff. When you do something here, it's going to work only within this level. On the other hand, class blueprint, when we click on blueprint and click on new empty blueprint class, then actor, if we create an actor blueprint class here, we can use this guy in any project, in any level, and it will just work. That's the main thing you need to know now between level blueprint and class blueprint or actor blueprint. So let's open the level blueprint here and take a look at the UI here. What do we have? On the big area, just like the material editor, this is our level blueprint editor so here we have our nodes these nodes as you can see have pins that we can drag stuff from them to connect them to other stuff and you can see we have a list of a very long list of so many things we can create and script functionality we'll get into that in a second up and on the left we have some panel or a tab called my blueprint and on the first green button here we can create variables functions stuff We'll get into that in a second. We have graphs and this is the event graph and it has an event begin play, event tick. If we remove this guy, it's gonna be gone from here. There are functions, the same here. If you click on create function, we're going to have functions. We will discuss that also soon. Just delete it, macros, variables and whatnot. All of that is in the my blueprint tab. On the top here, just like our boy here, the toolbar, top toolbar, we have the most common used buttons like saving the blueprint, compiling what we did, searching for stuff, play. And if you click on event begin play and the details tab here, we have nothing. But if you want to see what we can edit here, for example, it would work on other nodes, like when we have a variable. And when you click on new variable, that's introduce this guy. This guy is Boolean. And if you click on it, you would notice here, it asks us, hey, please compile the blueprint to see what settings you have here. So if you compile, we can see how there is the name of this variable and there is just true or false. So the first variable we're gonna apparently learn about is Boolean and Booleans are variables to check true or false. For example, we are scripting a behavior that let's say an elevator that we want to go up or go down, we can check for the player, for example, if he is inside the elevator or we can ask question, hey, did that player click that button? 
move the elevator. False, keep the elevator where it is. Or just don't do anything. These are booleans. Let's delete that guy. You notice when we deleted it from here, it stayed here. So when you click a variable, you get two options. Get the variable, get whatever information it's within this variable, true or false, or set that variable. On the class settings, this is, has to do with the level blueprint. We can see more options. And class defaults, there are even more options that we can also check on the level blueprint. I don't think I ever used these to be honest, but I'm just showing you they are here. Scroll to zoom in and out, right mouse button to pan. And if you want to zoom even more, hold control and then zoom even more and you can see. So this guy is called event begin play. It has an icon here that we will see more often on such event guys. It have a pin to execute stuff. What can we do with this? Event begin play. Hmm. It's gonna make sense. So when we click play, this guy is going to do something if it's connected somewhere. I'm going to click and drag from here. And one of the examples we're going to learn or we use it to debug stuff is called print string. It seems that now when event begin play, print string, string is another type of variables and it contains text. And that text here says, hello, boy. Every time we do a change and we want to test our blueprint if it's working or not, we need to compile. Click compile. It will check for our script if it's good or not. And then we should be good to go. Now, I would like you to look at the corner here because this is where the strings usually gets printed. And once we click on play, look what will happen. So click play. Yeah. Hello, boy. And it lasted for like a second or something and it went away. I'm going to press play again. Oh, there we go. Hello, boy. <laughs> That's a funny string to type. Let me show you something. Next to play here, there's debug object. Now it says no debug. I'm going to click on this drop down and click just on whatever I have here. And now I would like you to take a look at this line, this executable line. Press play. Oh, it fires to this guy. And then we, we see the hello boy. So I'm do that again. Hello boy. Nice. So obviously if we disconnect it, then press compile then play, nothing is going to happen. If you've done this, I would like you to open Unreal Engine on the side and do exactly what I'm doing here. So we can learn blueprint together. Let's see what we have here. Here, print to screen. This is a Boolean. If we make this false, even if this is connected, press play, nothing is going to happen because it just does not print to screen, but it prints to the log. There is option for the text color, so we can change the color to whatever we like. Oh, nice. And we can change the duration. And you can see these different colors. Each and every one of these colors means something. This pink is always string as a variable. This red is a Boolean. You can always hover your mouse over and you can see here print to screen the name of the variable then below it what type of variable this is. So it says here boolean and the same for the text color. So here it's a linear color structure. You can also right click a variable and click here promote to variable or an option. The same for here. This means we can do so much like the things you can do with blueprint. The more you learn it, the limitation is your imagination in my opinion. I love blueprints because it just makes me, hey, like this guy needs to work, right? <laughs> and we will learn more and more with these lessons. Here, this is a float value. Float is only a number, so we cannot enter a text here. It won't work. We can see there is always description of what it does. Now, speaking of variables, you remember this friend? So I'm gonna call this guy print, yes let's say, and compile. I'm just going to drag here, this guy, click get. And the default value of this Boolean now is false. If you connect this guy here, click compile and save. And we press play, the string should not print here. So press play. And that's right, it did not print. Okay, interesting. How can we change this? Obviously, if you click through, compile, save, click play, it will print now. But let's say we don't want to do that. We want to change this value in a different way. I'm just showing you around blueprint, guys. Good stuff. I'm gonna click and drag, click set print. So now we need to set this value. And again, I'm gonna show you something here. The default value is false. I'm going to connect the executable pin here to this one. And I'm going to set this Boolean 
I was like, true. And then I'm going to connect it here. I'm going to compile. I'm going to save. And even though the default value now is false, what's going to happen that event begin play once we press play is going to fire up. It's going to set this variable to true. And it's going then to just continue whatever it's doing. Regarding print to screen, it's going to check if this is true or false and then act accordingly. So now by this logic, when we press play, we should see the text here. So let's go ahead and test that. And that's right. This actually happened. Something we need to know that the order of these nodes matter by pressing alt. Just like Material Editor, you can remove these stuff. So I'm going to connect this here and then connect this here and press compile, then press play. And as you can see in this case, because the order matters, even now this is true, but it doesn't matter because before it, it was false. The text did not print. Click save. Now, I hope you guys have like basic understanding of blueprints. I love it. I just love blueprints. Okay, let's continue. What else can we do? What about duration? We agreed this is a variable, it's a float. Let's create a float of five seconds, but we don't want to tie five seconds here. Let's say we just want to do that in another way. We can click on variable and call this float. And now we need to change this variable to something else. How can we do that? Well, variable name, variable type, other options. And if you click on variable type, these are all the types of variables we do have inside of Unreal Engine. So many. It's incredible, like these programmers, man. <laughs> but don't worry about all of these because we only now care about these are the most common variables we use. One of them is float. So if we click float, click compile, the default value now is zero. So if you do this five seconds and then drag it here, click get and assign it here, compile, save, then press play. This is going to last now for five seconds. We can also search. Let's say you want a variable that contains static mesh. Okay, just search for static mesh. We do have like static meshes and whatnot. Let's say variable about materials. You can search, hey, material, there is material. Well, you know soon that I'm gonna show you how to set static meshes, change materials and all that good stuff. I want to take a moment to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I can hardly think of a better fit for a sponsor on this channel. For those of you who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. There are thousands of inspiring classes on topics including design, freelancing, filmmaking, YouTube success and more. In order for me to recommend something, my criteria is pretty strict, I have to use the product, it has to improve my life, and I have to like it enough to recommend it to a friend or Habibi. I've been learning from Skillshare for the past two years on many topics like video editing, productivity, user interface design, and making healthy foods. There are two classes I recommend and I learned so much from when I started my YouTube channel. Build an authentic channel that's worth the follow with Sorel Amor. Script, shoot and edit with your boy MKPHD. What I like about Skillshare is that it's cursored specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons and got class projects. The first 1000 of you guys to click the link in the description will get one month unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Let's uh, do something more interesting. Let's uh, drag a light. And let's discuss what can we do with the light. So from place actors, I'm going to drag a point light. And let's say we want to control this point light with blueprint. How? Well, we need to reference this point light into our blueprint. And in the level blueprint, to do that, again, blueprint is pretty smart. It's going to try and help you. One way we can create nodes is by just clicking and dragging from any pin to find whatever executable actions we have. And we have all of these. And mind the context sensitive. If you untick this, you will see much, much, much more. So for now, because we are all beginners, always keep this on. Because the other options may not work. So just 
keep this on. How else can we create nodes in our level blueprint? Well, I'm gonna deselect this first. If you right click, just like the material editor, we can see all actions for this blueprint, context sensitive. And on the first line here, it says select actors to see available events, functions. Select actors, that sounds familiar. Let's click our light and let's see what happens now when we right click. And now we see we have our point light, it's called point light 3, if you can see the mouse hovered above it. If you right click, ooh, add event for point light 3, call function on point light 3, create a reference to point light. Interesting. Just click create a reference. What will happen if we click and drag from this point light, place a new node, and we can promote it to variable, but I don't think we want that now. We have all these options here. And let's say we want to be more specific. I mean, we can do so much with the point light, right? So if you click on the point light and go to details, we have the intensity, we have a light color, we have a tonation radius, we have all these options that we could change, right? Let's start with the visible. Visible true or false. Let's say when we press play, I want the light to be invisible. So visible, let's see what would happen if we click and drag from here and search for visible. The beauty of it is just reduced everything we have to rendering. So we could access visible if we just search for rendering somewhere here and then like see what's up. Noise. Let's just type visible again to reduce what we have. We have function that is checking is visible, which is perhaps not what we want now. And we have set actor hidden in game, which is something I'm looking for. Let's see what this is. And let's connect this guy here. And let's just keep everything as it is. Click compile, save, and let's see if anything is going to happen. Nope, the light is still on. By the way, you notice when I clicked uh, play, it took me to this actor here. This actor is the player start. Let's say you don't want this, you can actually click here, click on active player mode and spawn player at current camera location. All right. So now if we press play again, which is alt P, the shortcut for that, we start from this position. Let me make this slightly smaller so we can see it when it's firing off. It's all about this boolean guy. We remember our guy print, so we can call the variable anything. And let's set this to true, and let's connect it to this guy. You can actually also click and drag and it will uh, connect it. So now, this option here, the new hidden, is set to true when we start the game. And when we press play, this light should be invisible. Wow, look at that. It's invisible actually. Or if you don't want to do this, obviously what you can do is just tick this, click compile, click play, and it does the same thing. There are other ways to make this light visible or invisible. I want something that, hey, visible, so not hidden. I'm going to delete this guy and search again for Visi. Now we have toggle visibility, we have set visible. So that's the difference between these two guys. We use set visibility or visible, and there is also toggle visibility. When we press toggle visibility, and let me also compare it with the visible that we just uh, did. So I set actor hidden in game. So this is toggle visibility. When we clicked and drag from this point light, it took the light component. Just so you know, when there is a point light here, right? There is inside it a light component, which is the, the light itself. So this is the light and this is the light component. It made the reference for that for you automatically. And it connected it to the function that's called toggle visibility. Nice. There is this we can set the light visible or invisible in other ways. So this is toggle visibility. This means if the light is off, so now toggle visibility is what's going on. When we hit play, it's going to be on. It's just toggling the visibility. So let's say we want to toggle the visibility of our point light in more ways. For example, if we go near it, it will toggle its visibility. How can we do that? That can be done in so many ways. One of these ways is actually volumes. We can create volume here. When we enter that volume, the visibility will toggle. Let's go to volumes and search for something that says trigger. So looking here, we have a trigger volume and this guy is a box that takes some 3D space. When we enter it, it will register something. When we exit it, it will register something. Once you have your trigger box selected, let's open our level blueprint and right click. We have events for this trigger box, functions, and we can also create a reference. Let's create a reference and see what can we do with that. And actually, let's also right click and see what else we have. So when we 
click on this drop down add event for trigger box or for trigger volume one on collision here we have three options begin overlap end overlap actor hit it seems like begin and end overlap is something we're looking for on actor begin overlap on this trigger volume we can do something let's add on actor begin overlap add actor end overlap let's test this before we connect it to the visibility so we can debug so print string is one of the cases we use this so we can say hey begin overlap and we can ctrl c ctrl v to make a duplicate of this print string and we can do end overlap i'm gonna compile this save it i'm going to press alt p to play and we can't see the box we later will add some rules for that but okay just go near it begin overlap go outside and overlap so we can always trigger this and let's take a look at these guys here when we begin overlap it fires up when it's end overlap it fires up nice to be able to visualize what we're doing let's go to content browser if you don't have starter content go to add import add future or pack and then go to content packs add the starter content then let's go to architecture and drag a wall this wall going to top view and click alt so i can make a duplicate of it going to enable my grid and it would just make it easier to make a room for us so basically let's add another alt move this guy to the top go to the left let's make a very simple room all right and make this box covers the whole room so i'm gonna go to the top and do this doesn't have to be perfect nice now let's open back our level blueprint and let's get rid of the string and let's see let's get this guy here we again we want to toggle the visibility when we enter the box i'm gonna click compile play now when we enter it will toggle the visibility of the light and when we leave nothing will happen when we enter again it will toggle the visibility again and okay we're getting places now let's say we want to toggle the visibility when we enter or leave what we can do is we can connect them both to this you can trigger events in many different ways that's this is one of them click play uh, compile save and now alt p when we enter it begin overlap it toggles the visibility when we leave it toggles the visibility again nice let's say you want to do the opposite of this so we would turn off this guy now when we enter the house the light will be on and when we leave the light will be off let's say you want to do something different to this light other than toggling the visibility we can click on our actor and go to the details tab and we can see all the options we can search for or do things for for example one of them is the light color so we can simply then click and drag from this guy or this guy it doesn't really matter so i'm gonna search for color because again i don't know what exactly i'm looking for but i know it has to do something with the light color and blueprint will help us finding that when you just type color we can get the light color we can also set the light color nice let's set the light color it will create another light component object for us you can get rid of this and just connect this guy here and let's set the new light color to orange yeah let's say orange then we need a way to toggle this how can we execute this we can connect it here let's keep things little organized can get spaghetti really real fast let's hit now play enter nice we change the light color easy peasy all right let's stop the lesson here try this exercise see what other options you can find what other ways you can trigger events and i will see you guys hey it's your boy yahya from the future who just finished editing this video if you've made it this far thank you but this also tells me that you're determined in learning unreal engine and blueprint if that's the case go to our new learning portal vr division academy there you will find many more tutorials on ArchFizz, Blueprint, Environment Design and if you like the free tutorials and you want more you can do that by joining our academy as a premium member this will help us build the academy, make more tutorials my dream is to build an academy and I think these are the first steps an academy for everyone to learn Unreal Engine and to apply it in their lives the good stuff why? well so that's why VR Division Academy 
<laughs> I appreciate the help guys. I hope you learned something today and I will see you soon. Let me know what you want to see next. Don't forget to leave a like. I'm going to pick 10 winners from the comments section to get full access to my Unreal Engine Mastery class and everything it has to offer. Leave your questions. Tell me what you want to see next. Just make a comment, but we make it meaningful, you know. And I'll see you guys soon. Cheers.